Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Welcome to an overview video of our events filter module in the Divi events calendar. So in this video, I'm just going to give you an overview of everything it can do and take a look at all the settings and features. All right, so you can see here, I have a demo set up. Um, you can click uh, to view the demo there, of course. Um, let's see. So first of all, you'll notice I have filters and then the events feed. So this area up here is the new module. Um, you can show and hide the filters like that if you want. There's settings for that, which I'll show you later. Um, I can, first of all, I can search by keyword and it's going to connect to the events feed module. So let's take a look. Watch if I type in something like music. Notice how the events in the events feed module respond to the events filter module. Okay, so they're two different modules, um, but they're interlinked, okay? All right, and there are lots of other options here as well as you can see. In fact, there's 16 of them in total. So some of these, um, when I click here, I'll be able to like choose um, an organizer, right? So now you can see this highlighted, it turned this black color, has this little X, I can remove that. And uh, if I choose it again, you'll notice the events all change. And now only the ones with the organizer of Elvis Presley, um, which of course is just a joke, um, they filter by the organizer. Now let's say I wanted to see everyone that's by that organizer in a certain city. Well, unfortunately there are none because it's combining these two options. You can see they're highlighted. Um, and there just are none. Now, if I get rid of the organizer, there is one event in this city. So I could go to that. So again, these kind of work together. Um, it's kind of cumulative. It adds them all together, the logic. Let's say I wanted to see category uh, events in the community events that, um, let's see, that were in the United States. Oh, there's actually just one here. Um, or I could choose other categories you know the thing is with this I have multi select on and I'll show you that later notice how there's check marks but maybe something like uh, you know state there's just um, single items city oh city has multiple category has multiple tags see how if it's in the business tag it'll show um, so Certain ones you have single select and certain ones you have multi select and I'm going to show you those settings But basically just you know get familiar here. Look at all the options order by Date range, you know next seven days tomorrow this month. I can choose a custom range right here. I Could say by um, events that happen in the morning, you know, or Let's see how about on um, Sunday, you know events on a certain day of the week or in the month of November <laughs> uh, or certain year uh, cost I could slide this filter maybe all the events that are under twelve dollars <laughs> you know um, but a certain address a certain state country city venue tag category organizer okay so you get the idea um, let's take a look in the back end of this module all right so here you can clearly see separate module here the events feed here and the events filter here so when you first open this up, you'll see a list of all of these items. Now, notice that I can rearrange these if I want. See that? Notice how they rearrange. So you have full control here. This is really nice. Each one of these will have a little gear icon. Um, and inside there is where we selected the filter. So right here, category, um, I could change this to anything else, right? Um, but I wanted it on category. So when you open up, you know, when you update or add this on a new site, you'll have to go here and click add new item. And then it will open up this inner child. So like the inner child module. And then you can choose whichever option you want. Okay. And then rearrange them. So you might have to do that, you know, multiple times. Now, a lot of times you don't need all 16 of these settings. In fact, some of these are um, certainly overkill for smaller websites. Um, maybe categories and uh, maybe the you know the month or the year you know things like that are more standard um, but it's up to you 
Inside each of these items will be options, and I talked about the selection. So here you can see selection method is single or multi. So you saw that I was selecting multiple categories. So that's if I want the user to be able to say, well, um, combine things. Like if I want to go to an event, if it's one of these three cities, or if it's one of, in one of these five categories, that would apply to what I'm looking for, that kind of thing. Um, otherwise, you could just limit it to one. They can only pick one at a time. Um, so that's up to you. So a lot of these settings will have that option. Now, some do not, obviously, like cost, for example, would not have it. So it's kind of based on, you know, what the setting is. Uh, moving down here, we have layout. We have it um, because we're intending to add a vertical layout. Um, where We have ideas for that. It's not finalized yet, but... Thinking of like if we put it in a sidebar, there may be some changes that need to happen to just make it optimized for that kind of setting. Um, the connection, that's not really needed at this point. Um, if you wanted to put something in here, you could say whatever you wanted. Um, you know, my ID or whatever. And then over in the events feed, you would come in here and put the same thing. So right here, like my ID. So that would link those two together. Now, you're probably wondering, well, you don't have to do that, and you don't. Because by default, the first module on the page will be linked to the events filter. Um, what I mean by that is, so this one and then this one are linked because it's the first one. Now, if I added another events feed module down here, it would only filter the first one. If for some weird reason I wanted to filter that second one with this, um, I would use that connection ID. And also in the future, our hope is to make the events filter work with the events calendar module. And let's say you had a calendar and the events feed on the same page. We wouldn't know which one to filter. Therefore, you would need to start using that connection ID. Okay. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so inside each of these, there's also design tab or design settings. So like category, I'm in here, design. I could change this text to blue. I could make it bold. See that I can do all kinds of things. Maybe add a shadow, which it doesn't look right, but uh, maybe I want to change the spacing. I really want a lot of spacing. And you know, I really want to add a crazy border here. And you know, I could do what I want, right? But when you look back at it, you're like, hmm, well, I've only done it to this one. So that is nice that you can override that. But here's what I would recommend. Instead of doing that, go to the main design tab and then click on filters and then start doing your changes, right? See that? Maybe if you did want there to be a lot of space and you would do that. Um, if you did want to change text to blue, you get my, you get my point here. Uh, maybe you want to make them square like that. Whatever you want to do, it would make more sense to do there. Now this active filters one, you saw that when I had the item selected, it turned like that dark color right here. Be the same thing. You could adjust the spacing and border and space, box shadow, whatever for that. The drop down is like this here, this area right here. So watch this. If I, uh, you know, I'll just do some extreme things for you to see. Um, all right, so now I click on it. So this is the drawn out, it's this crazy blue. Um, I might want to uh, adjust some of the other things, right? Uh, let's see, like the color. Oh, that's in the drop down text. So right here, the next toggle down, I might want that to be eight, huh? Let's see, I'll show you that. You can even adjust this. So if I change this right here, this padding in the drop down text. Notice how I've made that small now. So yeah, you can do a lot of things if I make that bold. Let's see if I change this. See how they're centered now and capitalized. Yeah, um, I am actually pretty happy with all of the settings we've added. It's just incredible, actually. Um, there's just so many settings. And it, back to that whole thing with like the child items, you could now go back in there and say, well, I want, I, for some reason, I want category to be different. And, and you could do it. So right here, um, let's see, you wanted it to be dark. See that? 
and you want it there to be a, a different border color. So you, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that all you want. All right. Uh, next is collapse filters. I wasn't quite sure what to call this setting. That's this here. Show option to collapse filters. That's this. So watch. See, now you can't even collapse. Back on. Collapse by default. Now that's a whole different thing. So right there, now it's, you know, when you, you know, someone comes to the page. Now, now the filters won't show until I click that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's, um, I would say probably use the responsive settings here. I would probably say to not collapse them on desktop, but on phone to collapse them. See that, how you can change that toggle based on, on that. So maybe also on tablet, see that? And then on desktop, turn it off. That way on desktop, they're showing, they're not collapsed, but when I go to a small screen, they are collapsed. That's probably what I would do. So take note of that. Um, and you can even adjust that there. See that? So yeah, text right there. Adjust the font size and all that. Okay. Um, and then the search button right there, search button, design styles for that. Um, right there. Okay. So as you can see, we have a lot of settings. If you have some ideas, something we've missed, let us know. Um, hopefully this is mostly self-explanatory. Um, it's, you know, everything works just like other Divi modules. All those design settings, again, that's to your discretion. As you can see, there are some default styles here. Um, by default, there will not be any filters. You'll have to add whichever ones you want. Yeah, I think I've covered it. Um, if there's anything I've missed, let me know, or um, actually keep in mind as the, the plugin continues to be updated, we add new features, things might change. So if this video feels outdated at some point, you know, you'll, you'll understand. In the future, I do hope for this to work with the events calendar. It's a little trickier to do that. Um, hopefully, um, we can get that done as well. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoy using the events filter module with our Divi events calendar. All right, we'll see you all in our next video.